Okay, welcome to the Biology Required Practical Activity 4, which is related to enzymes. Uh, and today we're going to look at the effect of temperature on the enzyme amylase. So hopefully you already know about amylase. Amylase is an enzyme found in your digestive system, mainly in your salivary glands, in your mouth, and also in the top of the small intestine. And it breaks down starch, into glucose, which is a sugar. Now, what I have in front of me, okay, is I have a sample of amylase, I have a sample of starch, and what I've done is that I've created a water bath here for them, and I've added five centimeters cubed of starch in one tube, and only one centimeters cubed of amylase. Now, you're probably wondering why they are in separate tubes. Well, that's so that they can get to the required temperature because I, I want to see the effect of the temperature. So before I add them together, before the amylase starts to break down the starch, they need to be at the correct temperature. So in this case, I'm looking at the thermometer and it says 22 degrees C. So I make sure that I note down the temperature. And then what I've got to do is set up the actual experiment here. So what we have here is a spotting tile, and this spotting tile I'm going to add iodine. Now if you remember the required practical activities related to food tests, you'll know that iodine is a brown substance, and then if starch is present it goes black. So it should be a brown substance here, so I'm just going to add this to my spotting tile. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, is add my sample of amylase and starch um, every minute to the, um, to the iodine. Now, when starch is present, these, these brown spots will go black. However, once amylase starts to break down the starch into sugars, then it will start to remain brown. So I'm gonna mix these two together. Okay, so you, you've got the starch and the amylase, so I mix them together. I'm just going to shake it to get them to mix, and then place them in my water bath. And immediately, I'm going to take a sample from there, okay, and I'm going to put a couple of drops in. As I put a couple of drops in, I'm going to put that as my start point. So I'm going to start the stopwatch. And as you can see there, it goes black. The reason it goes black is that basically there is still starch present in that solution. So what I'm going to do is wait for one minute and then um, test it again. Okay, that's one minute. So what I'm going to do now is take another sample here and I'm going to add that to my drop there, okay. And I'm going to sample it in another minute. Before I do, I'll just show you the result there. You can see that actually something is happening because it's, it's basically less black here than it was here. So it's shown that the amylase is breaking down the starch into sugars. Because remember, iodine only indicates for starch. Okay, that's two minutes now. So I'm now going to take another sample and I'm gonna add it now to the spotting tile. So you can see there's still a color change, but you can see it's not as dark as it was before. So that is now two minutes, sorry, that was zero, one, two minutes. Okay, now I'm coming up to three minutes and I take uh, another bit of my sample and I add it to the spotting tile, okay? It's important to empty the pet every time you've done that, okay? So again, if we look at this, look at this, you can actually see there is a change in color. So this is, there's still some starch present there because it's not uh, completely brown, okay? You still, but you can see that the amylase is breaking down the starch. So that's after three minutes. Okay, we're coming up to four minutes now, um, and I'm gonna take some more of my sample, and add it to the well. 
Okay, and as I add it, you can see that there is no change. So there's no change. I'm going to stop my stopwatch. Okay, and that's after four minutes. So the results there, that's showing me that after four minutes at 22 degrees Celsius, the amylase has broken down the starch into sugars. So that's the first experiment. Okay, now that we've done one temperature, we're going to do a warmer temperature. To do the warmer temperature, we're going to use a water bath. Uh, here you can see that all I've done is put some water in a beaker and I've heated it up with a Bunsen burner. Notice that I've switched off the Bunsen burner because I don't want the temperature to further increase. So I check the temperature. In this case, it is 47 degrees Celsius. So uh, I record that in my table of results. Um, I prepared the, the starch and the amylase before, so I'm going to mix them together now. And just give it a bit of a shake to make sure that they uh, mix, and then put it back into the water bath so you want to maintain that temperature. And again over here, I've got my spotting tile with iodine, so you can see the iodine is in there. Okay, and with a new pipette, I'm now going to take a sample, okay, and I'm going to add it to my first and then start my stopwatch. So you can see there, okay, it's gone black. And I've started my stopwatch and after a minute, I will uh, take another sample. Okay, it's been um, a, a one minute, so I'm going to take another sample. Place it again into the dish. Okay. So you can see there that um, there has been a colour change. That suggests to me that the amylase is maybe working slightly quicker than the other sample here. So if we look, this is at the 22 degrees. This is at the 47, so you can immediately see there's a difference. I'll just place that over there slightly. Now it's been two minutes, I'm going to take another sample. Okay. So as you can see there, there is a slight color change. Um, so I'm gonna run it, uh, keep running until uh, it stops changing color. So you can see it's nearly fully uh, change colour and therefore I would stop but I'm going to continue because there is still some starch left in that sample. Okay now it's three minutes so I'm going to take some more of my sample and I'm going to add it to the next. Okay and as you can see as I add it there is no colour change so that is showing me that after one to three minutes there is no change. You can then plot your results uh, in a graph or you, you, you show your results in a table. Just to go through a couple of things with you about uh, different variables. So in terms of our independent variable, the independent variable that we were looking at today was temperature. So you would change the temperature. Now I've only shown you two uh, temperature, different temperatures today. Usually you would look at about five different temperatures and you may repeat the experiment as well to get um, maybe at least three repeats, so you can work out a mean value. This makes the data more reliable. The dependent variable is the thing that we are measuring, and we are measuring the time it takes for the, um, the sample, for the amylase to break down the starch. We know that amylase has been broken down, but the starch has been broken down by amylase because there's no color change in the iodine solution. Control variables, well, we have used exactly the same amounts of starch and exactly the same amounts of amylase with the different temperatures. Um, we're also careful when we add the solution that we add similar amounts of solution, if not the same. In terms of keeping the temperatures the same, we ensure that we, we measure the temperature regularly and um, use a water bath and we can measure the temperature to ensure that the temperature doesn't change very much. So we're sure that what we're measuring is correct. 
Okay, so that's the end of this required practical.